dealing with a very serious plight, man. I want you to know that this is not going to be corrected in a generation. It's going to take several hundred generations. But I'm afraid and I have settled in my self that it's not my role or my need to devote my concern, my fears, to project my fears or to internalize the fears of the collective chaos that are the collective anxieties that are brewing in people. This energy has been festering in the underbelly of our social our society and it's now has bubbled up and rose up due to the heat being turned up on it right when heat boils up kinetically it just rises in pressure so it forces itself upward this anxiety and for the most part it was buried beneath southern hospitality and all the other bony ways that we paint over our real pain, the suffering and the dysfunctions that is brewing in this societies. There is going to be no escape, no escape now, no escape now, man. It's no escape. We cannot escape the pain. We cannot escape trauma no more. I'm begging you because I can feel that you're not aware. Of any of repercussions of crime. How can you still think in your mind that it goes unpunished? And I know that we're not going to get around to the real truth and the sources of our pains, though I'm being imploring and begging for healing, revolutionary healing. Let's just come into somebody's life. One of you that's hearing me out here begging y'all to send my video to somebody that could be just confused or y'all know is living on the down low. These men are coming out of prison and they're still dealing with brokenness, sh fracturedness, shatteredness of the whole ego. The personalities are split off in so many different zigzag puzzle pieces that's all you could do is just look in amazement, befuddlement, and utter confusion at what we're witnessing out here. Men barely surviving and are living with personalities of grandiose, and living with personalities that of chasing this vision of success, chasing after their now wildest dreams that have just come into their consciousness due to them now seeing a prospect of hope and change in their life. They saw a glimpse of freedom and they now wanted to grab onto that, that light. It was so addictive, so intoxicating. And this has become their new object where they now 
remove all of their motivations that was driving, I guess, their fame seeking, their admirations of being respected and having high ranking, being that ad- badass, you know, not to be messed with as a fighting for the ranks of respect and and to invoke fear in people as well. Because this is the persona that they've created in themselves and that's how they want to project to the people that they want to be. So we're not going to be messing with this guy. Don't make any jokes. He could stab you. And he's known to kill, to threaten to kill, and he is ready to kill at any time because nothing is going to stop and stand in the way. No obstacle is going to prevent him from getting free. And if that means getting physically out of this prison system or getting free out of his head to get out of the the game activities in there and start going to school and get a vocational skill while in this prison setting or get it into a relationship with a trans woman and being loyal to her opposed to being a booty bandit and being out here being reckless with the other boys for that pack mentality and that sustained respect dare you alienate them betray them by wanting more by wanting peace by wanting change education to better yourself to get any glimpse of light it's going to terrify all that darkness they can't have you discovering your dreams in this group we all fester in darkness we all like what we like and we've settled and accepted this defeat within these walls that we don't see getting out of nor do we want to because we feel safe here this is our natural habitat <clears throat> I've always felt caged, locked up in solitary confinement in my head. Never been seen or heard. My own parents don't like me. So this is where I feel safe at. This is where I can have mirrored to me all of my dysfunctions that look normal to me. Because everybody else has accepted it. And that's all I realized life is all about. It's just social acceptance. It's making up all of these social behaviors and what's deemed to be popular. And if criminality is popular and everybody's doing it, then, hey, get in to fit in, right? So this is the mentality, every man for himself mentality that we develop isolated that hard and dark heart to where you have no empathy for no one. But it doesn't take away that fear of that boy self, the fear of the unknown. You can deal with being caged up and locked up and caged like an animal, even sit for months in uh, solitary and talk to no one. But you cannot deal with that fear of the unknown, which you can't control. So you let go and you surrender completely. But where am I going with all of this? I've tried to sort of build you up for 11 minutes and felt inspired to really give y'all a pretty good story about how I met a very interesting person that reminded me of a lot of disorders that are festering in this black man. His antisocial personalities, his sociopathy and psychopathy tendencies and behaviors and traits, his narcissistic personalities, his chronic lying and saying things that are far fetched. Are we dealing with a mental illness? Are we dealing with someone who just is narcissistic? 
which is a mental illness. So we're just dealing with somebody who is limited and isn't all the way healed, but that doesn't stop the vision from pushing through and pushing forward in God's and as God is moving and working in this person's life that has now found himself out of this prison setting where he doesn't have to be cunning and violent and he doesn't have to live with the illusion of climbing this invisible social ladder in this prison rank because he realized at the top it's nothing. And he's disappointed like Dorothy in Emerald City, standing before the wizards, realizing that he was a phony and a fake and his whole world was illusory, but they were just all happy to get there, right? And they were kind of, they wasn't all that, but heard about the wizard being fake. And they could never get them home. Why was they okay? But accepting that. <clears throat> we'll never know. But they was happy to be there, right? Just like we're happy to be in prison. We're happy to be back in our state of our dysfunctions. We're happy to be back in the toxic relationships and recidivism and going back to the prison system. Because half of these people are never free as they're thinking freedom means being physically out realizing that their cage has been entrapped and metaphysically it just draws them back to the source of their hurt. So this individual felt sorry to see the pattern of these people never being free and realizing that this concept of freedom was an illusion. So when he got to the top and was realizing that he was about to get everything that he had fought and killed and murdered and robbed for, and it wasn't worth it because it was that wizard being phony, giving him empty promises. And he didn't see, he saw it as breadcrumbs. God snapped him out and of his illusions in that moment. <clears throat> and realized that it was all built on untruths. So he went to seek out what the truth was in his new purpose in life. And that was to be successful. That was to go get an education and bring back those moral senses in himself that was implanted in him. These little seeds that was implanted in him sporadically throughout his, you know, for the most part, invalidated, ignored, misattuned, disassociated life, traumatic life. Neglected, neglected, neglected life, unnurturing and unloving life, abusive father beating the mother, seeing the abuse in the house, the father living in psychological time in the 40s in Jim Crow, Virginia, where people could get hanged for wanting their education. He saw all of this fear existing in his parents. He never respected the woman because he saw that you could didn't have to respect women. He didn't want to be anything in his life because he saw that you could always quit in your life. All simply by the way he saw his father. But it was something in him that was driving him towards that vision of success. And he knew that successful people didn't end up in places like prison cells as he saw all of his buddies being returned back to the prison as he thought that that was the object of freedom. So freedom wasn't really free, being free. So then it had to be more of a personal decision to be free in the mind. All right. So what are the necessary conditions to make this happen? So he started going to get an education. He got moved to a rehabilitative uh, unit so he can be around like-minded people who was encouraging him, mentoring him, giving him advice and making him really truly feel validated. That restored so much integrity, self-esteem, self-worth that wasn't there before. That restored so much masculine pride 
And this is so important that we're going to get this back. We need this back in our black communities. We can't be operating on hate because his man is mind is being torn down to where he's exhibiting antisocial personalities simply from never feeling seen and heard. Gang members are expecting us never to come to them and encourage them to stop harassing students on the streets and stop trying to recruit kids. They expect us to ignore them because they don't think that we see them as humans. And this has created so much the criminal demon mind in that man. We're going to go out and lash out on everybody who ignored him and validated him, discriminated against him, never seen his worth, told him what he couldn't do, projected their own insecurities on him, and just basically kept him in the state of the way that they wanted to see him. And he, will, he will be mad with himself for allowing this. And he's going to blame other people because he's too much of a victim to take the accountability. So he's going to coward and scapegoat. And this is turning men into crime criminals in the, in the prison system. And it goes on, and the beat goes on in there. The drugs, the extortions, the coercions, all that violence. They got shanks ready. Um, they got shank factories in some people's rooms. They're distributing knock them out as soon as you get to the unit for protection. So you get into your game. And it's complete control of your mind, your behaviors. It's a pack mentality, and there's no way out of it. All the loners get singled out and become harassed and become the victims. It's just known in the prison system. You can't be alone. You can't be a loner. You can't have your own temperaments and your predisposition because that is going to be what's going to alarm to other people that you could be um, conquered and manipulated and, and, and basically destroyed. So this is the demon mind. This is that primal innate drive he has in him. And I realize that no matter how much I'm imploring, he's not going to get rid of this man's nature. He's still going to indulge in crime because the systems are still in place to keep him still feeling inferior. The systems are starting in his family, and that's not going to change because the mind patterns are too disordered. And the mind is disordered. I'm not coming and saying that there's no hope. I want to believe that there is going to be some revival or rejuvenation of all of this, but I'm seeing such a desperate state in this man. He's going to never be able to come out of this mental disorders of antisocial personalities and narcissism. It's going to take him down. It's going to take this whole society down. Um, but I'm going to pray every day. And I'm going to fight every day. Guys, if you get to this channel and can hear my voice, Gonna have to start loving, validating black men. We're gonna have to start seeing them and just hearing them and smiling at them and, and stop disengaging your eyes simply because you don't know them. They want to be seen and heard. They need to be validated. We gotta be courageous and just do this. Can you please? They're getting all these disorders. I'm seeing it in their personalities. I just met a 14-year prison inmate who has all these personalities and he wants so much in his life. I can see the vision, the hope and the promise, but I see a person who's deeply discombobulated in his mind about his true, about his identities and, and it, I guess his concept of reality and his self-awareness. Uh, I'm seeing so many deficits in his communication of understanding people's emotions and, and so many men are not understand the people's emotions and body signals and hand, body language. They don't understand this as they're lying and they don't have the mechanism to stop them from telling lies. So that's a signal to me that there's something going on in the left hemisphere of his mind. And that veil has been lifted and now that neuron is just signaling, sig shooting that signal of uninterrupted, uh, they call it confabulations that just come out of a person's mind. He do it with a straight face. And I'm realizing that people are just taking these people for their word out of intimidation. How can this person have gone to all these countries and owning all these properties and owning all these contract, million dollar contracts and having this authority to fire billion dollar uh, companies and going in and just creating uh, 
programs in different countries like Sweden and Finland and, and Liberia. And you got properties in three different countries. And your wife is a doctor and you went to Harvard. And But you got a rat track record of robbing drug dealers and you got two attempted murder charges while in prison that extended your time. How can I believe everything that I'm hearing? This is so astonishing to me as I'm being enraptured and suddenly taken off guard as I'm trying to enjoy my lunch. As the person that's sitting on the other side of me with their uniform on is talking to me now. This is interesting. Hello. Yeah. I've been up all night trying to understand this character, this personality, for the most part with good intentions that seem to have connected with me. And then it turned into some sort of business involvement now to where he wants to use me now to write for him about topics that I'm already writing about. And I'm already interested in talking about all this prison stuff. God, how did you know or manage to link a person like him up with me? But I need to understand this person. I don't know this person. So I need to go do some research on this person. So I'm looking and they are on the internet. They got websites. They got the LinkedIn. They got like Facebook. Everything is connected. But nothing's is really there's no real receipts of everything that he's saying to me and i can't figure out am i dealing with a narcissist is this a sociopath is this a crying liar why isn't anything making sense to me i don't want to think this person is a liar <laughs> but how can i think that this person is doesn't have the, the a shrewd tongue or know how to be conniving or to get what he wants. So that brought me to some studies of antisocial personalities and sociopathy. I want you guys to understand some of these sort of traits to look for when you're dealing with somebody with these type of personalities. Uh, it's very strange. I can go on and on about what I observed from this person and what I've heard on the line about this person and their story. Uh, and I believe in that vision that he's speaking of, but it doesn't connect with everything else that he's saying. So I realized that God ain't all that concerned about who he's using. At this point, I can accept the murdering, the robbing, all the violence and terror that he inflicted on people. I can accept the story of him leaving prison and going to Harvard. I can accept all of this. I can't accept, and I can accept God using a person like this who might have maybe sociopathy or narcissistic personality. Uh, they could be dealing with this. Uh, this could be a form of psychopathy, and it brought me to a book. I have a chap. I have a video in my channel you can actually look this it's called the mass of sanity i didn't go into detail about this it was in the just give me our introduction of this but they have some case studies that i think would be interesting if y'all want to understand some of these traits of psychopathy a lot of these men are dealing with this and god had me deal, uh approaching this over a year ago Definitely going to dead back into this because I think this is what we're dealing with right now with this man, why he doesn't care, while every establishment is seems to be uh, tank being destroyed by his own by his own works and designs of just being self-destructive uh, due to biology or due to the breakdown of his mind. I guess we'll never know. But God is imploring me right now to let y'all know that these inmates, they're getting out and they're working up with the general public. They still got these traits that they don't want to be conniving, to rob, to be con artists. And you just got to be weary of them. They're, they're not going to stop at nothing than to destroy everybody who didn't hear them, validate them, to see them. That child self is going to lash out at everything and everyone 
due to this unhealed, unfractured self of theirs. With their books, with their accolades, with their new fame, even their riches. And they may be able to prove how receipts for everything of this new life, but it didn't change that boy self. And seeing everything through his boy eyes. And they're going to always be limited and stuck in this way. Uh, and they're trying to break these forces of, uh, of these mental bondages. And these are spirits. Um, and they'll have you going out, writing all kinds of books and hoping to be the number one bestseller. <laughs> Trust me, I was one of them people. I would walk from the Bronx, take the train all the way down to the publishing companies in Manhattan. Oh, yeah, I went to the best ones thinking, having this dream that they're going to see me as a writer and want to take me on <laughs> as a writer. And then it ended up leading me to self-publishing and stuff. But is it fantasy or is it division? I don't know. What's driving us? And what are our real motivations? And we've got to ask God to help us in this area because it could be being driven by ungodly ambitions. Okay? And that devil wants to get us into these contracts, un these un de de demonic contracts, whether that means in business, or just creating a persona uh, or an image for yourself that isn't built on any integrity or being driven by the source of what you're claiming to be driven by and inspired by, which is God. When we see contradictions of the line of your life and what you're actually accomplishing and doing in your life and earning and being and feeling honored and proud about. Is that connected to that boy self that never had anything and always had that poor men, poor mentality? And now in order to break out of that belief, you just tell yourself that you have $25 million contracts. <laughs> I mean, the stories go on and on. You made 24 million in four years doing outreach. He claims to have fired a $2 billion company in a youth center. He has all these flights of ideas, uh, which just has led me to think that he has his narcissistic personalities and the prefrontal cortex damage due to the left hemisphere being offline. Very psychopathic personality disorders. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting things that I found in his traits, in his personality that have uh, met some criteria that I have been discussing about why men treat the women and see view of women, sorry, viewing women in a more uh, same sex type of way to where they don't want them to protect them anymore. And seeing the masculinizations that is a threat to their own masculinity by default. Uh, just some things that have come up in his interviews, uh, but even it was even more astonishing that nobody's really fact checking this person. They just taking it on at for his word. So this is the intimidation that these demons, these warlocks, have guaranteed that we're not going to question these criminals as they getting out and telling us that yeah, I saw God get snatched up and raped by twenty guys as he's looking at you with a straight face, and we don't question that or <laughs> so. Where's this fear? I know this is the reason why a lot of men are not approaching or bringing up these topics. Uh, we just automatically have never had to deal with challenging our manhoods with other men in this way uh, due to choice, you know? And I think it's important for us to bring this up. These criminals that are coming out of prison are broken and their hearts are still broken and they're fractured and it's got them with multiple personality disorders, narcissistic personalities, antisocial personalities, sociopathy, psychopathy, which is inducing them to all kinds of crime and mischievous and deviant. Uh, pursuits. And I'm going to take y'all through this book. I'm going to take y'all through all of what I've learned about this person. Maybe I won't. But I just want y'all to know that I learned, I'm starting to see that this is all mental illness. 
but it doesn't stop division if a person is trying to break out and really try in their life. That's what I'm viewing in this person, but it doesn't take the fact, and I can't ignore the fact that I have similar story to this person, coming from poverty, neglectful families, unnurturing and abuse, and trauma was definitely there, never being seen, always feeling rejected, and being scared of loneliness and being alone in life, having aspirations and wanting to have, and have knowing I have gifts on the inside of me and never having them nurtured or believed in uh, or explained to me how I can cultivate them to make me ultimately more happier in life, uh, where I have the result to criminality and stuff to get what I wanted, to live the life that I want to be able to maintain my self-esteem that that was surely there in me. And it's in all of us men, but they're getting destroyed daily by these emasculating practices in this beta male matrix. Uh, that's keeping it from your awareness that being broke is emasculating. And I have a woman that validates you and appreciates you for the man that you are and helps you build into a man, a good man, decent man, upright man, at least working with you, try to help your personality and post to just putting you down. Uh, and all your inadequacies, uh, bringing them up to you every day. We know what they like to say when they get angry or how they really feel about you. That's all emasculating. These are all systems of behavior that has been designed by the Jezebel to emasculate you and make you feel unmanly, along with your funny bank account that can never get out of that negative At this point, you will see the woman as being economically independent in you. So if she's making more money, then that's great. You can have a hypergamous relationship and then you can just assume a passive role in that relationship, right? And I'm seeing these criminals being okay with this. They almost expect that. And if they're not in a relationship where a woman is making more money than them, then that is a reason why they consider themselves to not have in their life. Can you imagine? Because I'm not in a, a relationship with a woman who's making more money. So this is where we're getting to with these type of narcissistic men. They take in and remove this, the whole construct of what that role of that woman was supposed to be in their life to give them a sense of ma masculinity. So now they are now required to feel masculine because they never felt masculine under white supremacy that they are realizing that they are under in the chokehold of. Um, but this is stopping their erotic fixations and desires for whiteness and seeing it as a standard of beauty. So we know that social conditioning is still very much prevalent. Uh, and that's scary to me when you're also dealing with self-hatred and projecting that with rage and anger and distrust in other people that look like you and that you so secretly have a propensity like like your femininity it's scary when you also have a murdering uh, a murder rap that spans so long where it starts with our home invasion one count of seven to 10 year charge, two counts of nine to 10 charges, two counts of 10 year charges, two counts of 15 to 20 charges and a five year sentence charge. And then you get pick up two attempted murder cases while in prison, raising his sentence to 14 years. You have a history of robbing people and selling drugs in jail. Uh, these aspirations of climbing the social ladder by achieving through wearing fine clothes. You know what? I want I wanted to read y'all this story of this interesting man that I met. I cannot get him out of my mind, but he is the example of what these men are dealing with right now, what we're dealing with in the society with this man. It's, it's sociopathy, it's antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality. It's those four. We gotta start taking the mental health seriously. They're lying to our face. They're telling us white lies with a straight face at this point due to the, how the brain is functioning. They don't have empathy. That's the narcissism 
on top of all these little disorders that I just brought up. I'm not trying to gaslight you all, man. I'm not, but it's scary. Y'all, demonic male is just, just, just destroying y'all minds and the psychology is out here. I just have to just give y'all the book. I'll give y'all the DSM-5 and let y'all go in and read these characteristics. Find out if you have any symptoms of this and start praying and rebuking these demons on y'all. Because you got y'all here lying, creating websites and personas. And where y'all going with all of this? As y'all seeking self glamorizations, exaltations, fame, money, and all these securities. Is it built around fantasies or is it the vision that God has for you as a man? What is your real purpose as you're creating all of these different networks and got this, oh, you got a whole story. You're on everybody podcast. You want to be on everybody. Sh- yeah, every one. And you're getting gigs. You're being utilized. But it's not all making sense because you got a whole nother persona that's in your mind. And it's not connecting to what the people are seeing, or at least what I'm seeing. And I want you to stop living these two different personalities, stop living these two different lives. So I'm trying to do, don't be lukewarm, is what I'm saying. Don't be lukewarm right now in y'all lives. Y'all gotta be fully committed to what God has in your life so you can stay out of crime, trying to climb this invisible social ladder, trying to make people in y'all pack happy and people from alienating you and not liking you in y'all hoods and stuff and y'all gangs. Like, this powerful man pack mentality is so strong. Y'all are the real slaves out here calling yourself so masculine. And you, you, y'all can't even make sound decisions for y'all so without worrying about rejection. And y'all just, you know I'm saying, that you want to get out and take a couple college classes and get you beat up by 30 people that claim to respect you. So where is the respect and where is the real love? It's the it's an illusion. That's not real love. And you can't really trust these people if they're going to beat you like this. Uh, if you okay with accepting being beat by 30 dudes to get out of a game, <laughs> that's just as ludicrous as going in that game. And you more likely have to get beat to get in there and sodomized at this point. So now they realize that that can also uh, derive uh, power and pleasure as a foul in the back of their mind and saying, what's up, dog? As they sit on the corner the next day selling drugs because they in their new positions now. <laughs> what do you got to do to get promoted? Kill somebody? <laughs> More than likely. My butt hurt right now. Can I go get a seat? I've been up for three hours, boss. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a part two. Very interesting. We're gonna go into the mind of a psychopath. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to go into the mind of a psychopath? What are they thinking like? What are their agendas? What are they up to out here in this world? And they're raping and pillaging and manipulating and robbing and scheming and cut being a con artist. Oh, yes, we got to learn about all of this personality today. I told y'all, I'm not going to sleep until y'all, this whole darkness and evil is exposed in the, in the demonic mind of this man. And now we're dealing today with psychopathy. So I'm going to take y'all all over with psychopathy today. Y'all ready to get into the mind of a madman? Let's go in. Um, all right. <laughs> Ciao.